What's going on, Commanders fans? It's your man, Anthony Armstrong. Got my boy over there. Mr. Brian Murphy reporting in from ATL. Welcome right. back. It's draft week. We are right around the corner from the NFL draft, and we got some draft just topics all week for y'all. So we're just doing a little extra work just for you. Uh, that way you have some draft content to listen to. But Brian Murphy, what's going on, man? How you doing down there? Freshly uh, shaven, haircut, got his hair slicked to the side. If you're not looking, He's kind of like a who's it, Ryan Reynolds. Is he one of those? Ooh, they like that them. would be nice. Yeah, they like him. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's a good comparison. That made my day. So uh, yeah, I'm good. Uh, just uh, celebrated a birthday. So I guess that's maybe the glow that you're seeing, the 32 glow here. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, things are good. Uh, weather's warming up, but you know the NFL never sleeps. So that's what we're we're grinding out here and. Uh, like you said, the draft is right around the corner. I think we're single digits away. We're we're recording this on the 18th. So, yeah, the 27th, that is nine, by my quick math, nine days away. So uh, excited for that coming up. It's always one of my favorite events because you never know what's going to happen, and uh, I think that that is uh, going to be the case again this year. So, yeah, I'm getting pumped. Uh, excited to see who, who the newest commander is, but also just uh, all the new players coming into the league. It's always fun, fun, fun time to watch. It really is, and this is when you get all of the you know the stories and the back the backstories from the players about the players, and, and you go and see how they yeah. grew up and what they went through and their story line making it to that draft day. So a lot of dreams come true on draft day, and frankly, on the flip side, there's a lot of dreams that get uh, I don't want to say crushed, uh, but let's say diverted. You know, and yeah. some people continue to push, uh, and other people go ahead and just bow out and move and, and go down a different avenue. So. It's an exciting week. Y'all stick with us all week for this information. Brian, we got to tell them about our sponsor. Yeah, we absolutely. Tell them about Bet Online. Let's not forget about those guys. I got the website open, but Brian, tell them about Bet Online. Yeah, you can go to betonline.ag and use our code BLEAV to get a 50% welcome bonus. You can bet on the NHL playoffs, NBA playoffs, which are in full swing, MLB. You can also bet on the draft. I know at some point we're going to do some draft props. We've already done over under four and a half quarterbacks being taken. Anthony's going safe and going under. I'm going to take a little risk and go over. But you can bet all of that. I saw that you can bet a number of prospects from each conference. So there's all kinds of draft uh, plays and props there. There are always contests, all kinds of stuff going on. Be sure to head over there and check it out. And remember to get your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Use our code BLEAV, betonline.ag. You can access them from your phone, from your computer, your tablet, all that. But betonline.ag, that's where the game starts. It is where the game starts. Game starts up front. Uh, offensive lineman over or under five and a half. So um, mm-hmm. there's there's a lot of there's a lot of prop bets uh, assigned to the draft that, that are very interesting. I mean, there's some of them. You'll see some of these names that would apply to some of these categories. Uh, this week from us and, and from other ne- uh, networks or covering other teams. Not networks. I'm sorry. Other shows. Yeah. Covering other teams on the Believe uh, network of stations and shows. So uh, SEC players, 11 and a half over under. Uh, the, the, uh, immediately, I want to say immediately, I want to say over. But I mean, that's half of the first round. I mean, just about uh, almost a third, maybe. So, yeah, that's oh, I don't know. That's not, that seems like one that they're going to get you. It seems like Vegas knows something we don't know. That seems like a perfect number right there. Yeah, that make it tough for you, but uh, there has definitely been some news going on recently in the draft. We're talking about the Texans might be might be trying to move uh, that second round pick, and I know that's not that wasn't what we were supposed to talk about right now. But we will talk about it. What do you think about that? Should the Texans look to trade that number two overall pick, especially with Bryce Young canceling his other visits, where it appears that he's going to be the number one selection to the Carolina Panthers? Heck no. If I'm, if I'm a team and I've got C.J. Stroud, who is a proven uh, college quarterback right there, um, or Bryce Young, I'm, I'm taking one of those two guys. I feel like both of them are, are can't miss. And uh, maybe you don't like one a little bit more or a little bit less than the other. I am sticking right there and getting my quarterback of the future, setting myself up for the foreseeable future. Uh, I'm not passing up that quarterback. I know not everything's a slam dunk and nothing's a given, but – uh, you're in a pretty sweet spot to be right there, and uh, I think you got to take advantage of it and get the most important position in sports, and that's the quarterback. Yeah, with Bryce Young determining what well, apparently it's pointing to him being the first selection. Um, yeah, 
you know, with that happening, it does. It just makes Houston the the base, the number one now. They're they're on the clock. People are assuming that Bryce Young is going to be gone. Um, so if there's somebody that was trying to make a, make a play to go get C.J. Stroud, uh, this may be something that can make some sense for them. I mean, there was even rumors they were throwing around. You know, Will Levis uh, may well actually Will Levis is the second. His odds are now second behind Will Anderson to be the second overall selection. Mm. So. Now, okay. will, will Will Levis jump up above C.J. Stroud? So there's, I mean, there's a lot of things that are out there that could potentially happen. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, yeah. But I think with with what Houston has and where they can build, I mean, they have a lot of options. Um, they may be able to drop back and pick up some extra picks. And this is a pretty deep draft. They can address a lot of needs um, in that regard. So that's just something that happened recently. But let's get to the topic for today. And what we're going to talk about right now, who are, some of, who are some of your favorite prospects uh, in the draft that you want the, your team to draft? Do you want the commanders to draft? Yeah, I, I think I think we've talked about a, a few of them a lot over our shows. I think um, I don't know if we were holding our own odds or our if we were making bets. I think between us two, we would probably bet that this team is going to take either a corner or an offensive lineman. I think is that is that safe to say? Yeah. I mean, I think that's where I'm leaning. Yeah, um, that's pretty so, much it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it just makes the most sense. Um, and you mentioned last time we saw them pick up a couple of offensive linemen through free agency. Um, they really kind of stayed pat with the guys that they have in the secondary, which makes us uh, or makes me think that they are leaning corner. So I really have focused more on the corner and the offensive linemen. Now, now I'm gonna I'm gonna probably switch it up on you from a, a few weeks back. If Paris Johnson or Skaronsky are there uh, talking about offensive tackles, as much as I have been banging the drum for a corner. I would find it hard to pass up one of those two guys in Paris Johnson, the offensive tackle from uh, Ohio state and then Skaronsky, the offensive tackle from what Northwestern. Mm-hmm. Uh, those just seem like two maulers and two guys that I would just want on my offensive line for five to seven, 10 years. Um, so I, I would have a hard time passing up those guys. Uh, but then for me, it's those, those big three corners and Witherspoon Gonzalez and Joey Porter jr. If you give me one of those five guys, I'm going to be walking away, away happy uh, on April 27th. Yeah, that would be a good first day, uh, a first night of the draft over there in Kansas City. If you got any of those names, I mean, I'm with you on that. That was the list that I had. I, I had to dig a little bit deeper. Uh, just look at this some later rounds of some, some other players that are out there that we've heard with you know, some of the previous episodes we've had. We yeah. had Joe Lombardo. Uh, we had, um, oh my goodness, you know, I forget the fellas last name. Adam was Adam last week. Adam Aniba. Uh, yep. Yes, Adam Aniba. Yes, he came through. So, you know, shout out to him for his you know, draft uh, talk as well. But I'm with you on those names. All of those names there. Um, some of the second round names that are going to be there, Steve Avila is a name that you know Joe had brought up and you see him kind of tied uh, to the commander with a little interior help, you know. So um Cody Mouch, the guy out of North Dakota State guy ain't got no teeth, you know, teeth in front, yeah. man. So uh he, he you gotta think he's gonna bring an attitude and some nastiness <laughs> That's right. um down That's here right. to down here to the team. But you know one thing that makes me think that you're going to have to dig a little bit deeper into the cornerback position, maybe like a Deontay Banks, a um, uh, young fella out of Mississippi State, uh, he's dropping, missing his name at the moment. Forbes. There's another Forbes, yes, Emmanuel Forbes. Uh, you got the young fella out of TCU, uh, Stephen Wheeler's teammate. There's some other players that are out there because if you look at the fact that Jalen Hurts just got the bag. Jalen Hurts yeah. just got paid, well-deserved. He's the most highly paid player in the NFL at this moment. Uh, at this moment, $51.5 million a season. And uh, shout out to him, Nicole Lynn of Clutch Sports negotiated that contract. Um, there's like over almost a half a billion dollars of guaranteed money spent on the other three quarterbacks in the NFC East. Washington has yet to uh, drop that price tag on somebody at that position. Right. Um, so in my eyes, the number one, I don't think you have to try to race to get the quarterback of the future, but you sure as hell better get something that's going to help you beat some of those star power quarterbacks that you got in this division. So getting deep into that DB list um, yeah. seems to be something that I would be, you know, kind of leaning towards like, Hey, you know, can we drop back and pick up a couple of these guys? Cause you're going to need some work. You're definitely going to need a little help uh, with this talented, talented division of very wealthy quarterbacks. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and we know it's a passing league, so it's not just the NFC East. It's just every team's got a quarterback and has got two to three to four weapons that, that are available. And you need guys that can cover all over the place. That's why, you know, I wouldn't be mad at a guy like Brian Branch uh, from Alabama, a guy that can play a little bit all over the place. We know how much Ron Rivera and Jack Del Rio love guys that can kind of play hybrid roles, go up against a couple of different players or kind of big, uh, but fast as well. Um, that kind of fits the mold, you know, Benjamin St. Juice kind of tall, lanky guy, but then they've got Derek Forrest um, and Cam Curl that can, can match up not only against wide receivers, but against, uh, you know, tight ends as well. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they go heavy in the secondary, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they, go cornerback in the first round that they don't pick up another guy in the second third round as well like that that wouldn't surprise me at all because i yeah. think you need it all hands on deck because it is a passing league and like you said right up close and personal they've got three uh legitimate quarterbacks in their division that they're going to have to face two times each um yep. so so that makes a whole lot of sense yep and i, I just went to uh, pff to do a little mock draft because I was like, hey, let's throw it in with, with Bryce Young at first. And I, I let the, the simulation do this. It Bryce Young went first, and I, I'm assuming they you know, probably made the algorithm make that happen. But yeah. uh, Bryce Young first, Will Levis went second. We talked Interesting. about that. And I'm see, not a big Will Levis guy. That that could be for another another podcast, but that is yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I yeah, I, I don't know a whole lot about him. Other than he's just a big arm quarterback, so it kind of I just have some connect. We'll talk about it on another podcast. We'll talk yeah, about yeah, another episode. Yeah. episode. Uh, Jalen Carter third, C.J. Wow. Stroud ends up in uh, Indianapolis. Will Anderson in Seattle. Uh, Devin Witherspoon in. Detroit, since they traded away Jeff Okuda, they definitely have a spot mm. for DB. That must be sharp in Sharpie that that guy, one of those guys, are going there. Skaronsky is a Raider. Anthony Richardson uh, falls down to the Falcons. So that's interesting, interesting. with them having Desmond Desmond Ritter. We'll fast forward a little bit, just drop a few names. Christian Gonzalez to the Eagles. Uh, Dalton Kincaid, tight end at pick twelve to the to the Texans. Uh, Tyree Wilson fell all the way down to 13 to the Jets. But the, with the commanders on the clock, Brian Branch just went to 15 in this in this specific one. Uh, with the with the Cowboys, uh, Cowboys, Lord have mercy. The Cowboys are picking twice some. The commanders, here we go. Jackson Smith and the Jeeva, uh, Deontay Banks, Joey Porter Jr. is sitting there. Paris Johnson Jr. is sitting there. Those are the top names. Man, that, that that's a dream. At 16. That's a dream scenario for me. You can't go wrong with Paris Johnson. You've got Joey Porter, who I think is one of the, the top three corners. I know Banks' name has been mentioned. Um, that that seems like your pick of the litter. To me, I'm wondering in that situation, is there anybody that wants to move up and get one of those guys more than the other? And could you fall back a little bit? I know that that's something that you and I have discussed. And you got to have two to tango. You can't just say you want to move back and just free fall down the draft. You got to have a partner that's willing to move up too. But uh, man, that would be a perfect scenario because that you're, you're making me nervous when you said Witherspoon and Gonzalez were gone. That would be the worst scenario is if all these guys that you, you kind of have been thinking about are, are gone from, from yeah. the board. Um, but that seems like a pretty good spot to be in. I, I would have a hard time picking against Porter or Paris Johnson. As much as I like the Ohio State receiver, uh, Smith and Juba, I think that the wide receiver room is a little too loaded right now. I don't think you need to load up with another one in the first round, but Man, a lot of good names still available at 16. It really is. It really is. I mean, from the names we dropped, obviously, you know, I had Joey Porter Jr. on my list uh, inside of that top group of corners. Um, they've adjusted Deontay Banks a little bit above Joey Porter Jr. Um, and in ranking at least. So uh, take that how you will. And then there are options for a trade back. So um, I, I think 16 is such a sweet spot that yeah. any of our favorite players should be there, should yeah. be available. And um, you all, you don't have to really force anything, I don't think. But that's actually we'll save that for another episode. We'll save that for later on in the week. If if you should do some jostling, yeah. should you move around now that there is uh, there's some stuff out there? I mean, I don't know. Let's save it for another show. Let's save let, let, let me ask, let me ask you a quick one, real quick. We talk about positions that we think this team needs. Let's say the the first round ends. It's midnight or whatever, eleven thirty on on April twenty seventh. The Commanders have made their pick at sixteenth, or maybe they move down a little bit. 
what position would they have to pick that would absolutely either infuriate you or shock you? Like what, what position group would they have to choose that would just totally blow your mind and maybe not in the best way? If they, if, if, what position group at 16 would mm-hmm. basically grind my gears and have me yep. highly upset? Um, I'll start at the top. Quarterback would be one. I okay. would not be very happy if you if you went there. And the reason is, is just like I mentioned earlier, every other team in this division has made a very, very large investment in that quarterback position. I know you're going to say, oh, well, you need to have a quarterback to win in this league, but those teams are going to be hamstrung by those contracts. They're yeah. not going to be able to be as, as uh, have as much depth across the board. Um, so being able to do something with a young quarterback and not to force them in there, yes, it's same how, but I think you can, there's quality players. We're looking at it right here. There's quality players that are going to be there at 16. I don't think you need to try to make a play at quarterback. So quarterback would definitely be a position that would have me highly upset. Uh, would definitely make me think you just throw away everything we said all off season uh, about yeah. how Sam Howell was uh, your guy. I think for me, it would be a defensive tackle. As much as I think that you need guys to rush the passer and need guys to get after the quarterback, um, you put so much investment in that right now, and you're about yeah. to come to a log jam. Maybe, maybe, maybe I mean defensive tackle out to even like an edge rusher. You just have yeah. a log jam right there. And I know that you eventually you're going to have to get cheaper and you're going to have to make some hard decisions, and maybe the draft helps counteract that. But I think that there are, as you mentioned, some really, really good positions available at, at positions of need to where you don't need to to build up on that. Plus, you have Fedarian Mathis coming back. Basically, it's basically his rookie year. He played in, what, half a game last year. Um, yeah. So you, you signed Deron Payne and Jonathan Allen long term. If you sign a defensive tackle, I, I don't know what message that sends to them. And I don't – it just doesn't make sense to me. And so that would be a frustrating one. As much as I love getting after the quarterback, I don't think that that is the – the move right there. So no, uh, that's just a, a question that came to mind. And just what would it, we're talking about things that would make us excited. So let's make it negative and <laughs> the things that would frustrate us. Yeah, no, that is true. Um, edge would be a one that is kind of a head scratcher. And yeah. I think if you went with the edge, that means you'd be kind of writing on the wall like one of y'all two guys are gonna be here when yeah. I mean, you're not. And it's would it be frustrating? I can't. I don't think it necessarily would be frustrating. I it would surprise me. If the I would be taken back, taken back. If the Commanders draft an edge rusher in the first round, are you familiar with the Dark Knight? Heath Ledger is the Joker. Do you watch yes. that one? Okay, yes. where he snaps the pool cue and he's like, "We got one spot. You guys fight over it." That's what the 2023 season would become if they draft an edge rusher right there. So I, I agree with you. The writing would be on the wall that one of you is not going to make it long term with this team yeah maybe that's a motivational tool but i don't think that's the best way to do it i think you should find a way to keep them both but uh yeah that would be an interesting uh pick for sure it would definitely would but man i tell you this is good let's keep this one nice and tight we got some more episodes for the rest of the week every day you're gonna have a little something from the believing commands actually today a little, maybe a little daily double so uh yeah. check it out for that but shout out to our folks over there at bet online they got us sponsored up on this thing whole week long so we appreciate you tuning in check us out on all streaming platforms don't forget to use our code bet uh, at betonline.ag it's believe b-l-e-a-v get that 50 percent welcome bonus uh make your selection what how many picks are going to be up from the acc i got three and a half is the is the line so you get to choose that over there check us out on all our streaming platforms that is uh tuning radio uh you got stadium you got sirius xm radio and all your favorite streaming platforms for brian murphy i'm Anthony armstrong see you next time that's right. Well, if you're watching, you get a you get a bonus. We're gonna stay with it. Thank you to the guys at uh, BetOnline.ag. Don't forget to use that code and, and get that fifty percent welcome bonus. But we're gonna stick with it. We're gonna crank out a couple of here, a couple of episodes here. Uh, let Let's talk about um, draft day needs for the Commanders. So we've we've touched uh, through other shows. We've said that they need offensive line. With they need cornerback. So that's maybe the first mm-hmm. round. But let let's let's say. Um, we jump into a, a time machine and we fast forward to the end of the draft. I'm talking the end of the weekend, Saturday into Sunday. What are some positions that that, that we think that the commanders need to address? So it's easy to say, obviously, uh, defensive back, offensive lineman. You could throw in a tight end here or there. But it, when the commanders come away with their seven, eight, nine-ish picks, 
what positions do we want to see addressed? And again, you can go to betonline.ag, get your 50% welcome bonus. You can bet on uh, some prop bets about uh, positions, guys that are going to go first overall, conferences, that kind of thing. You can also bet on NHL and MLB, uh, NBA, the playoffs in the M- NBA and NHL. Uh, so go check them out and and put your put your money uh, where you're where where you're thinking on the on draft day as well. So there's some cool stuff there to check out there. But draft day needs for the commanders, and I'm thinking kind of broad, seven rounds long. What are the yeah. draft day needs? I'm putting yeah. you kind of on the spot. We've talked a lot about offensive line. We've talked a lot about cornerback. But what are some other spots that this team definitely needs to address before round seven is wrapped up and finished? That is a great question. I mean, I'm imagining there being a little checklist that you're walking into right. the store with, um, you know, maybe Mama Rivera, maybe Mama Mayhew has given out a little grocery list. They say, hey, go into the store and make Ronnie, sure you come out with Ronnie, these go get things. this, please. Yes, go get these exact items. That's what I'm thinking. We obviously check the big ones, offensive line, cornerback. You got to make sure you address those positions. But a couple yeah. of that come to mind for me, uh, linebacker, I think you got to get somebody in the middle. Um, you may just have, you know, a young, hungry guy that can show up and uh, and make an impact or maybe have some impact on special teams. That's a position I'm looking at. Um, probably, no, no, not probably, definitely want to make sure you at least spend the draft pick on the court. Not wow. early, not in the first, just mid, mid to late round. If you think he's going to be something pretty good, maybe third round. But right. I'd say at least check that box throughout the day. It's getting to the point in this league, you got to get a quarterback every year. Um, just, just in case, um, I think this, this is a definitely a year where you got to go ahead and check that box. Um, another one that comes to mind for me is just a little bit of depth at the running back position. I would think a little depth over there as well. So those are, those are three for me. I could probably keep going, but what do you got? Who, what, what positions are you wanting to see checked off the list? Well, I wanted to touch on tight end a little bit. I like, if I were throwing in, if we were, had odds at, at bet online, I think heavily on offensive linemen and cornerback, but I could totally see them going with a tight end, especially if they're yeah. able to move down a little bit. I don't know that a tight end would, would be a great pick at 16, but if you move back to like 20, you know, three or something like that, I wouldn't mind the guy from Utah. I wouldn't mind the, yeah. the guy from Georgia, you know, one of those guys. So I, I would definitely keep my eye on tight end, but yeah, I'm with you. Uh, a lot of those make sense. I think cornerback is so huge. I mean, go ask the 49ers. I don't think, you know, they expected Brock Purdy to have to play a big role for them this year, but they took a quarterback in the seventh round and it mattered. So you never know when when you take a guy, again, at the most important position in sport sports. You can't have enough of them. You can't have enough upside guys. So, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. If you like a guy, uh, go get him. Um, I, you mentioned it, and I agree with you. I don't want one in the first round. Um, but, uh, yeah, definitely get a guy. Um, I think linebacker, uh, makes sense. I think we've, we've said a lot about offensive line and, and I've kind of have focused more on offensive tackle, but I think there are some really good guards in there that can really shore up the middle of that, that offensive line that has kind of been a revolving door, not just in the way that they block, but also the names that have been in there the last few years since Brandon Sheriff, you know, left last year. So I think guards, offensive line in general, but guard center could also be a a good spot to look at. Um, I I wouldn't be mad at any of those picks uh, over the three days. I am going to throw in, I'm going to throw in receiver, but let me make sure Mm. I give this caveat. I'm, I'm thinking a Cam Sims, uh, special teams impact guy, right? Yeah. Somebody that, that can be lower down on the on the depth chart. And yes, I know they brought in a fellow from Kansas City. I want to say Matt Kemp. I think it's Marcus name. Kemp. Yeah. Marcus Kemp. Sorry. <laughs> Got him confused. Marcus <laughs> Kemp is in town. He may be that special teams guy. But, I mean, you still have a practice squad role uh, you know, if you draft the receiver. So I still think you should get somebody that you think could, you know, potentially you – know, fill in for what Cam Simmons was able to do on special teams. And, um, you know, we know that he doesn't have to necessarily play uh, play receiver right now. So I would say try to adjust that spot as well. Yeah. And I, I like the, your running back pick. I think that that's an interesting one. I think I have been slightly, slightly underwhelmed with Antonio Gibson. I, I don't know if it's the way he was used in Scott Turner's offense, and maybe that'll change and ramp up with Eric Bieniemy. Um, but I think there's a reason that uh, Brian Robinson, before his, uh, you know, all of that happened with Brian Robinson happened, that Brian Robinson was beating him out 
uh, you know, towards the end of the off season. So I, I think a running back that can come in, uh, maybe a guy that just, you know, could catch a lot of passes, maybe doesn't have as much wear and tear because that makes me nervous with, with any running back, uh, but somebody to push Antonio Gibson. I, I think that that would be huge. I think that uh, Gibson would hopefully respond well to that. And, um, you know, you look at what Eric Bieniemy did in Kansas City, they didn't really have a feature guy, and they used a bunch of different guys. Sometimes it was the Jarek McKinnon game. Sometimes it was the I- Isaiah Pacheco game. I think yeah. Ronald Jones even, you know, got a got a run here and there. So uh, and you can't have enough running back. Clyde Edwards-Alaire, you know, four mm-hmm. guys that, that play different roles and different rotations. So I think a running back is huge, and um, I think that there, there are definitely some snaps to be had there for a young guy that can that is athletic and can do some things with the football. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned all those names. I was thinking about Philly. Like, Philly yeah. had used a good, you know, two, three running backs deep, plus Jalen Hurts was running the ball. So having that depth and being able to throw in some fresh legs is good. Um, I, I think of that that other running back would be able to take take a load off of, you know, Robinson and, and Gibson. And maybe you're able to put Gibson in a more specific position you know like this is kind of what you're gonna do you don't have to worry about running in the tackle you know in between the tackle we can let you be a third down uh you know run routes against a linebacker or safety and get open that way so um you know it's gonna give you some flexibility it's gonna give you some flexibility but i mean now you know like i said before you you're you're taking a chance to get as, as as much depth in your roster as possible while these other teams have spent, you know, the vast majority of their their money on, on their quarterbacks. And yes, you're going to be able to get there, but whatever you do, you're going to have a, a hell of a Maserati that you just needs an engine to throw in there. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And we're going to talk about uh, what our the division rivals might do with the draft coming up in in a in the following episode. But but you talking about the Eagles, they they always seem to draft so smart. Like they're kind of looking two to three steps ahead. So where a, where a running back may seem like a, a six round nothing pick depth kind of guy, there's a chance that you know if if you know Antonio Gibson doesn't live up to his contract or does has a huge year, can you afford to pay him? Well, hopefully you've got a, a young guy that's been in the mix. I'm just thinking about running back as we're talking about it. Sure. But that you've got a guy in the mix that can be that starter in a couple of years. That's kind of how you have to think about this draft, too. It might not be just for 2023. Some of these picks, these draft day needs could be for down the road. To where I agree with you, a wide receiver, if there's a wide receiver that you like uh, in the second, third round, you know, Curtis Samuel could be up after this year. I mean, it's not like these guys are set in stone forever. So you got to have backup plans and, and depth and all of that in mind when you're making these picks. No, you really do. You really do. And trust me, they're taking that far ahead. Um, but, you know, just taking this opportunity to really fill out the rosters, I think has to be the play for, uh, for Ron Rivera in that front office. I mean, you're getting the new ownership coming here in a second. Um, you're going to have a great uh, opportunity to audition and showcase, say, hey, if you just give me one more season to get this quarterback. Yeah. Like, we already have everything else built together. Uh, maybe it's something that helps them keep a job. Maybe it's something that is going to get uh, Eric Bieniemy a head coaching job. But that's that's definitely for a future, future episode right there. Yeah, so so for me, it, across seven rounds, I'm thinking a cornerback, maybe another cornerback, so two defensive backs, uh, definitely an offensive lineman or two. That's four of my, let's say, eight picks. I think I round that out with a quarterback, a running back, um, pass catcher, whether tight end or wide receiver, um, and then a linebacker. I think those are those are all things, like if I had a wish list, if that was my grocery list, those were things that I would – be looking for and you never know you could add a couple more picks you could get rid of a couple picks if you try to move up somewhere in the draft but I think those are kind of the the key positions to look at for for the commanders in 2023 and beyond like we said yeah I really want to go back and think about the tight end um first round may be a little bit too high just just because it almost you know it almost damn near determines that you're gonna have to get that person to football that early uh but Checking that box throughout the yeah. draft, somebody that's going to be able to you know, maybe maybe be a more stout run blocker or uh, a good blend in between a, you know a, a pass catcher and a blocker that could be something to look into as well. So that yeah. is 
That's what I'm looking forward to. I think I think they're going to do all right. I, I'm trusting in this organization. In this yeah, room. and I, I think it, I think it's good that you have Jack Del Rio as a defensive the defensive coordinator who's been a head coach. Well, thank you. Uh, that has been a head coach. Uh, kind of knows how to build a roster, and he's kind of the head coach of the defense. Eric Bieniemy is going to be the head coach of the offense. So I imagine those guys have a big say, and it'll be interesting to see how those needs and those wishes kind of work themselves out in the first round and beyond. Because I, I got to feel like these are three guys that uh, know what they're doing and 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 want their want to say and what what's going on. So it'll be exciting to see. And like you said, I think the way they go with especially with the first round pick, but even into the middle rounds is going to determine kind of what their philosophy is. You know, if you, we see them load up on offensive linemen, they might, you know, Eric B might be coming in wanting to run the ball a whole lot. Uh, if they're going mm -hmm. strong on defense, you know, uh, they're obviously kind of playing literally defense against some of what the, the, the division rivals are going to do. So yeah, I think the, tour, yeah. the story is going to be told based on some of these picks that these guys make. Yeah, that's that's really is a good point. Um, we looking at what everybody else is doing. Like, wait, do we need to go ahead and stack up on defense? That makes a lot of sense, right? Yeah. Good point, man. You are a wise one at thirty-two years old. <laughs> well, so you have wisdom now. We'll we'll talk about the division rivals as much as we hate to uh, talk about them. We'll we'll talk about what they might do in the draft and how it could affect the Commanders. We'll do that next. Uh, so go to betonline.ag. We appreciate those guys. Uh, and again, you can make uh, some draft day prop bets, which I want to get to over the next week. I think there are some fun ones and maybe we can keep a tally, a little pick sheet of who gets it right during the first round. So go check them out. Use our co code BLEAV. If you're on the video, stick with us. We're going to get right into our third, our little like uh, our tri tripod episode here. We got three little episodes <laughs> in one. If not, if you're listening, we'll, we'll put this out uh, the next day. Uh, so look out for it. But uh, Anthony, as always, it's fun. I, this is just like draft week. We're cram cramming as much content as we can in in here, and it's going to be fun every step of the way. Yes, it will. I, I'm, I'm excited for the draft, uh, but we'll have more draft talk later on. Y'all stick with us. We'll see you guys on the next episode. All right, let's get to those other three teams in the NFC East. All three of those teams made playoffs. What do we think that the rivals of the Commanders, the Cowboys, the Eagles, and the Giants are going to do? Welcome into this episode of uh, Believing Commanders, and welcome back. Thanks for hanging on. If you've been watching us on YouTube, we've done a, a trifecta of episodes here, and we're hitting our third one. So we're going to talk about the division rivals. We're going to get to that in a second. Uh, but we want to talk about those guys that bet online. We've been saying there's so many prop bets you can hit on this NFL draft, especially the first round. Just go to betonline.ag. You can see all the contests, the prop bets, the futures. You can bet on NHL and NBA playoffs as well as the MLB in full swing. Use that code BLEAV for your 50% welcome bonus. Uh, you said, what, three and a half ACC players? That I'm, was the number. I'm, uh, I'm struggling to – get to three and a half. I don't, I don't know every player off the top of my head, but yeah, uh, right. I feel like that's, that's such a good number because I feel like it's going to end up being like three. Yeah. Well, I'm look. I did the, uh, I did the mock draft real quick and I'm looking ACC. Ooh, it's kind of slim, kind of tight, but you know, you didn't realize that, that one, what 11 and a half for SEC players. That's something that could be in play. Yeah, <laughs> that could definitely be a play. There's one, two, I mean, right there. If a Hendon Hooker sneaks into the first round, that's a sneaky one there. Um, mm -hmm. We know that uh, Jalen Carter from UGA, but Darnell Washington, the tight end, as well as Nolan Smith, the edge rusher, those are three guys from Georgia that could be first or first round pick. So yeah, it, it feels like Vegas obviously knows what they're doing. They always do. But if you mm -hmm. want to go uh, wager it up, go to BetOnline.ag. We appreciate those guys. Okay, I hate to give prop to uh, other teams, but the Cowboys, the Giants, and the Eagles are all coming off playoff seasons. Um, the Eagles, more than anybody, have just kind of been ravaged a little bit by free agency. So we got to think that they're going to, like they always do, draft well. But let's go over what some of these rivals of the commanders might do uh, in, in their first-round pick and, and maybe beyond, maybe position-wise, that they're going to be looking at trying to replace some of the guys that they lost. So where do we want to start on this awful – Try on for it with the E. We might as well just start at the top of uh, top yeah. of the division. The Eagles' biggest news we mentioned it before Jalen Hurts just got the bag, he got yep. re signed. 
well Rightly deserved so. extension. Yeah. Yes, indeed. He got his money. Shout out to him. Shout out to, Col- to Nicole Lynn and Clutch Sports for negotiating that deal. Um, that was big because I think you know that that checks. That's a big item to check off the box. Like you mentioned, yeah. it's good. It leaves a little bit less money to spread around. Uh, I think Chauncey Gardner Johnson was somebody that they lost. Um, so one of the things that I feel like the Eagles would not be above doing is making a draft day trade. Buda Baker just recently, just like last year, to get AJ Brown like last too. Year, yeah, and they mentioned you know Buda Baker was uh, was requesting a trade, and you know Philly has two first round picks, so they could you know more than likely be willing to move one of them if they had to, to, to bring in Buda Baker, talented player, going there yeah. to play safety. I mean, you, you had Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. I was hopeful that they didn't get him back, and they didn't, but then now they could potentially make a play for another very talented safety. So that's one that checks. That's at the top of my list. They can make a trade uh, to go and get uh, an impact player without even having to draft a guy. Yeah, well, what what has frustrated me about the Eagles is they thought so far ahead. So they lost T.J. Edwards, they lost Javon Hargrave, they lost uh, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. But, of course, last year they drafted Jordan Davis, they drafted N'Kobe Dean. And as you mentioned, they'll probably do something safety-wise to to fill in for Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. They they brought back Darius Slay. So they always seem to think a couple of moves ahead. That's why I kind of feel like they might do something that's kind of head-scratching, not not to the – effect of like drafting a quarterback in the first round but it feels like they would i don't think they're going to do that but i I could totally see them drafting like another defensive lineman or drafting jalen carter somebody like that just to build up that depth knowing that those guys are going to eventually get paid and it's going to get too expensive but then you fill the the needs from inside the house so um yeah, they, they just do it right. And so it's gonna it might seem like a head scratcher on the day of, but I wouldn't be surprised if some sort of curveball comes our way. Like a wide receiver, I, I don't know for sure, but it just feels like that's the kind of move they would make and, and they're kind of already game planning for a couple of years down the road. Yeah, another name that's on both of our lists is uh well at least I know he's on my list, is adding in B. John Robbins. I mean, I, I think he could draw he could fall anywhere in the draft. I mean they yeah. have pick 30 and then they also have pick number 10. Yep. So 10, 10 may be too high. I think the talent's there for, for Bijan to go at 10, but I think just based on how this draft is, I don't think he'll go 10, but would they move that 30 to move up into the mid range, uh, early twenties to try to draft a Bijan Robinson. They just lost uh, one of their running backs down there to, to Carolina, Miles Sanders. Yeah. yeah. So the, the one that, thing that, that gives me, well. Yeah, the one thing that gives me pause on that is that they then went out and got Rashad Penny. And I know he's not been the mm-hmm. most healthy guy, but he does run the football a lot. And I got I got I to think that they're going to lean on him a whole bunch. And I wonder, like you said, 30, like 10 too early for me for a running back, I think, anymore ever, unless I'm, I'm getting Christian McCaffrey and I know he's going to be Christian McCaffrey. I don't know that I'm yeah. spending a top 10 pick. And then, like you said, 30 might be a little late with Dallas lurking there in the mid-20s. Okay. Um so that's the only thing that gave me pause on Bajan Robinson. He's been like connected to the Eagles, I think, since Mach 0.1 went out, 1.0.2 went out. So, uh, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me, but I just don't know that he's going to be there. That's the only thing. Uh, but it would make a whole lot of sense and it would make an already dangerous uh, offense even that much more scarier. Yeah, his pass catching ability, like added to the wrinkles that that offense has. Um, Definitely makes you makes it uneasy uh, with yeah. what could be over there on that side of the field. I mean, just so many weapons, so much creativity. Um, so let's let's hope that doesn't happen. Let's hope that they yeah. don't get Bijan. Y'all go ahead and um, <laughs> go make a trade with somebody. Do something else. Don't go get yeah. Bijan. Leave us alone. All right. So uh, a team that I think could get Bijan Robinson in an, uh, uh, a move to maybe perhaps. Uh, replace their former first round running back, the Cowboys. That's where I could see Bijan Robinson going. What do you think that the Cowboys end up doing? Uh, we know that they picked up Brandon Cooks uh, as a second receiver to CD Lamb. Um, their defense was was really solid. They lost Dalton Schultz as a tight end, so that could be a way that they go. Uh, you said they pick, I think, 23rd. Is that right? I think that's yeah, what number they pick. I see him at 26. Um, they also okay. they also picked up Stefan Gilmore. Right, yeah. Right. Totally so they got him going. They franchised Tony Pollard, even though he's injured. Um, and 
uh, Zeke has been released, but he's welcome to return. Um, a much lower hit, I'm assuming. Yeah, at a much lower hit. Um, I had a couple options. One familiar name, and I see it's on your list as well, is Bijan Roberts. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's somebody that you would probably put in and start right now um, simply yeah. because Tony Pollard is out. Now, I think that just gives you lightning and lightning uh, because when Pollard is at his best, he is an absolutely explosive player. Um, and adding Bijan Robinson it just is that same explosive explosiveness, and you're going to see him be able to make an impact with Dallas on him. Yeah. I mean, you think that the, the receivers are going to open things up, and now he has room to work underneath. It can Plus, be frustrating. It can be frustrating Plus, to watch. Jerry loves a good storyline, and how sweet would that be for him to be able to say – the Texas boys staying home playing in Dallas. Like I can totally, I can already see the headlines. I can just see it all. And, and you mentioned Tony Pollard. We don't know that he can carry the load as the, the guy he's, he's done. He's made his mark, you know, kind of as that change of pace guy for Zeke Elliott. Maybe he yeah. needs another guy in there. I mean, I think he's talented enough that he doesn't necessarily, but that could be the, the best move for, Tony Pollard, as you mentioned, him coming back from an injury, um, but also uh, just kind of being able to be a change of pace, kind of bounce off each other a little bit there. I think Bajan Robinson, unfortunately, makes sense in a couple different spots in the division. All that being said, I'm hoping that we're talking about it. It's much ado about nothing because I don't want to have to face that guy a whole bunch, uh, you know, as a commander's defense going up against Bajan Robinson because I think he's the real deal. Yeah, I think he is. You mentioned Christian McCaffrey. I feel like he's probably got some of those route running skills of Christian McCaffrey. Made some lofty comparisons, but I mean, shoot, I, I like Bishop. He, I, I watched Texas. I like Texas. That's my team. Yeah. Um, the kid's good. Like when it came down to needing to play, he was John Robinson. Like, you find a way to get the ball in his hands, and he found a way to uh, take things to the top and 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 take the end zone. Just make play after play, catching the ball, running the ball. Uh, he'd be a huge addition, uh, but I have another, another okay. one for you that Dallas could, that could, could make. And I know you, I don't know how much Dallas news you get, but you know, living in the area, um, I, I hear it, see it all the time. There, there were talks about this one guy, his uh, his draft stock dropping. I what if Dallas made a play to go find a way to get Jalen Carter? Mm, like how far would he have to fall for them to go in and just make that all out effort? You know what I mean? You, you think like if he falls, so you said they're at 26, he falls maybe 12, 13. Yeah. I mean, he's going to, I mean, the tough part is he's, he's going to have to fall past, you know, uh, this mock draft we did. Had, I just ran, had him to go to the third, Cardinals. Right? Yeah. Had him to third to the Cardinals. He's been, uh, the bears had him circled, you know, um, uh, there's Philly that, that falls in that spot that we talked about yeah. earlier. Um, shoot. I mean, there's, I mean, that frankly, he's a talented player. You can almost say anybody could use him, Yeah. but I, f I feel like Dallas would, you know, have to get way up there. Maybe yeah. early teens, early teens is to but me, I could, maybe. I could see them doing that. You could almost argue that that's kind of what they're missing. They have the edge rusher, they got some guys getting after the pastor, but do they have that monster in the middle? I don't know. Maybe maybe that is the move for them, and that would be make a pretty good defense that much scarier. You mentioned they they kind of bolster their secondary with Stephon Gilmore. Already have Diggs, um, Demarcus Lawrence, and and Parsons coming off the edge. Yeah, that would be scary. But I think they'd have to give up a whole lot. To me, uh, I would welcome that because it would then probably weaken their the rest of their draft class. Right? I mean, they'd probably have to give up a second. And a third, if not more, to mm -hmm. uh, to get to get uh, you know to you want to get, get up there and get him. Yeah, because I mean, really, you think about it, I, I didn't even think of like that. Like that's that's one of those like strategic. I hope y'all make a trade for that guy. You can only yeah. get one player, but you're gonna have a hell of a player. But you can't yeah. go and uh, you know, they've done well in the draft over the past few years. So giving them less ammunition in the draft, I can see that being a great idea. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense to me. Real, real quick, I mentioned in passing tight end Dalton Schultz going. I've seen a couple of mock drafts where they take the tight end from Notre Dame, uh, mm -hmm. Michael Mayer or Darnell Washington from Georgia. Um, so a, a pass catcher, a, a cheap pass catcher to replace a, a solid tight end there could also be in play. Wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, 
So yeah, that, that, they they kind of seem like the biggest wild card to me. I, I feel like the Eagles and and you know the Eagles just do do solid stuff. The the Cowboys not wild card, I guess, in a bad way, but they could go any which way because uh, okay. we we know kind of what they're where they're looking at. So that'll be interesting to see. That leaves the Giants, who uh, the Commanders fell short to. They went one zero and one against last year. Um, yeah. What do we think the Giants do? I think this is an interesting one. They've got, they signed Dame Jones to a, a long-term contract. Uh, Saquon Barkley is on the franchise tag. Um, but he's not, he's not – I don't think he'll sign it. Yeah, I, I, that's what I've heard too. It, it seems like uh, Dexter Lawrence might not be happy on the defensive line, so they, they could be looking to look into the future and, and trying to get a couple of guys to replace some unhappy guys. Um it felt like the Giants were, were largely flawed. I think they were a solid team, but I think Brian Dayball and the emergence of Daniel Jones got them into the playoffs. But they obviously have some holes. What do you think that they might do come draft day? I think the biggest, easiest answer with the best odds if they were running prop bets on bet online for who the Giants are going to take in the first round, it would have to be a receiver. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of ties to Jackson Smith and Jeeva. Uh, you look at Jordan Addison, his name pops up in there a little bit. But sitting here, they're at 25. They're a pick ahead of Dallas. Now, let's say you've got to upset Saquon Barkley. Do you consider taking a Bajan Robinson right there? Get a very wow. talented running back on a rookie deal. You've got your quarterback signed up for a while, so you don't have to worry about paying him. He's not upset. Now you have a trade. Now you have a little, you know, a, yeah. a little trade chip in Saquon Barkley. Value yeah. probably goes down a little bit, or hell, you got a hell of a one-two punch. Yeah, I, I can see that. You know, if you're not able to trade him, I don't know how you repair that that relationship. You know what I mean? Oh no, yeah, it's it's gone um, at that point. You burn that bridge. To, but. To, to me, I didn't even think about it. that's such a that'd be so that'd be so juicy. That'd be such a good draft day trade if Saquon Barkley got got moved. That would be yeah. awesome. I would yeah. I would sign up for that. Um, I was thinking oh, wide receiver goodness. the whole way. I know that that was probably the the, the spot they were lacking the most. Um, yeah. Didn't really have anybody consistently uh, produce for them. Kenny Galladay was a total disaster. They went and got Darren Waller at the tight end position, so that's one pass catcher. But, yeah, I think yeah. they could absolutely pick up another one. But I kind of like your scenario. For the chaos and the the craziness, I'm hoping that, that that's what happens. Yeah. I mean, what do you think about it, too? You're going you're gonna to have to deal with this all summer. you got two – Players who are highly upset that this is from the reports that I've seen. I speculate, sure. I guess, but they're saying there's the reports saying they're upset that Daniel Jones got got broke off like he did, and I guess they yeah. want to get their money. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I'm not in that building, obviously. But those are two, you know, very talented players that um, were key could be in, impactful. Yeah, and, they, they were key in your in your your playoff run last year too. It correct. wasn't just Daniel Jones. Correct. Now, I mean, now you start talking about what's uh, Saquon Barkley's trade value. You know, yeah. is is that is somebody willing to give you a one for him? Probably not. Um, and well, and I, that's just because I mean, you got a little bit of age. I'm using air quotes if you're listening in on one of the streaming platforms. He's older, but frankly, he had a hell of a season last year. So you got to think he's still able to play at a high level. And it just kind of tells you what the NFL thinks about running backs: Josh Jacobs, Tony Pollard, Saquon Barkley. Uh, three running backs all on the franchise tag. I just don't think teams are going to pay running backs long-term unless they're Christian McCaffrey. I mean, I really think that's it. I mean, we've already heard yeah. Derrick Henry being linked as as a trade prospect, you know, and he's arguably the best running back in the league. So that's just kind of where running backs are at. So part of it is yeah. Saquon's kind of got to deal with that because that's just the way the NFL is going. But I understand where he's coming from. He was a huge part in their success last year, and his reemergence is one of the best backs in the league. Yes. Um, and one other scenario I had written down was what if they traded up to get a cornerback? Mm. That, and that's something that throws a little bit of a monkey wrench in Washington's plan at 16. Because if, if somebody jumps up to get a corner, you got to think those, those big three are gone. Yeah. They're definitely gone. Well, to me, I don't know if they'd be willing to trade in division, but the little mock draft that you put together had a couple corners and an offensive tackle with the, the commanders ready to pick. Could they mm-hmm. could they entice the Giants to jump up and take that spot, have the commanders drop back? I don't know how willing you are to to move within the division, but maybe you could yeah. weaken one of your 
enemies by making yourself stronger. I would love that scenario. Uh, yeah. if, there, if there is a guy like that. But, yeah, you're right. That could totally affect what they want to do. Um, it, it, it's just – it, we, we do all these draft breakdowns and prospects and predictions for for one trade to just throw everything, throw a bomb in the middle of everything. So it, it, that's right. kind of the craziness that comes with the draft. Yeah, it, and it, it makes it fun. I can't lie. It just makes it a, a very exciting to, to play around with the stuff, even though, even though it bugs me every time I sit there and get alerts on my phone. They're like, this trade proposal would send. And I'm like, yeah. you got me thinking that the person got traded. For right. So you know what I mean? It's not what really happened. It's like the multiverse. I mean, one we're having all these scenarios, and all of them make sense in our heads. It's just which one is going to actually play out when draft day yeah. comes, and that's what makes it so fun. And that's what makes uh, some of those prop bets at Bet Online even even more fun to think about because you could yeah. be in the right mindset, but then a team just totally throws a curveball for everybody. Yeah, I mean, you could. I mean, shoot, if they wanted to move up for Bijan, and where we don't think they would necessarily have to. I mean, you could probably afford to. You could afford to trade Saquon, swap ones with somebody, move up and and say, "Hey, we'll take, uh, we'll gladly take a cornerback at this at this uh, mid, low mid teens range." So. And we keep talking about moving back. Well, that means somebody's got to move up. And sometimes we see a team move up back into the first round. They make their pick. You think they're done. The mm-hmm. the Commanders did that a couple years back with Dwayne Haskins, and then coming back to get Montez Sweat. So there are teams that may think their night is done after they make their first pick, but then they come right back. So it's all fun. It's, it's stuff that we're going to break down. Hopefully the, the division rivals um, draft three busts uh, and, you know, the commanders <laughs> win every draft prospect grade. But we know that these teams are, are solid in the draft, and it'll be fun. It's always fun uh, when, when the NFC East is involved, and that includes draft day. Yes, it really does. But don't forget, folks, go over to betonline.ag. Use our code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, 50% welcome bonus over there for you. Uh, Brian, it's been fun knocking out a few of these episodes. We'll be back. We're going to get a few more uh, all week, y'all. The NFL draft is coming up. And I want to say we're going to have some live uh, reactions out there on the Believe Network as well yep. after the picks happen. So I remember last year I came back and I rushed home just to see that they traded the pick. Like, right, yeah, right. Dog it. And then we had a bedtime routine to go through. But uh, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> Yeah, we'll we'll be on top of it all, like you said, leading up to the draft and beyond. Can't wait! It's a, it's it's so fun. Uh, it's not it's not like any other sport. These guys are going to contribute right away. I think that's what makes yeah. it so much fun. Uh, so we'll, we'll be on top of it all. Uh, check out our guys at BetOnline.ag. Check us out all across the internet. Tune in radio, SiriusXM, Stadium. We might be on TV soon with the with these mm. good looking mugs. So be sure to check all that out and, and check out all the different platforms that you can see us and listen to us at. Yes, and you check out some of the other shows as well. Maybe you can go tune in and see what the folks are saying on uh, the Philly, uh, the Philadelphia Eagles show. And don't hang out too long. Just go yeah, check and see what they yeah. got to say about the commands. Report back to us. Uh, Brian Murphy, Anthony Armstrong over here in Texas. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. Thanks for listening. Share it with family. Share it with some friends. We'll see you on the next episode. Be good.